Sometimes when you're on my mind, I delve into the depths of wine, and I'd rather be with you. I'd much rather be. Hello, and welcome to the Fiber Tales podcast. My name is Lærke, and I'm coming to you from the southern part of Fyn in Denmark, where I live with my partner and our two small children just outside the woods and um, this is a knitting podcast if you're new I talk about knitting and some other crafty bits it has been a little while since I last managed to podcast Um, yeah Christmas happened and we went to Poland for Christmas so that was a big trip for us we drove there which is about eight nine hours driving Uh, we did it over two days just to make things a little easier Uh, So it all went relatively well, Um, of course it's a long trip to do with small children and we had planned everything but of course you can never plan for traffic jams and stuff so in general everything went well and when we came back uh, my little boy he started daycare so I really wanted to do it very slowly and give him time to adjust and get used to the new place so I've been mainly focusing on that and now he's happy being there. He's there for some hours every day and sleeping there and yeah, it means I have time again to podcast. I have time to start working on my patterns and I feel really excited for 2020. I I have a lot of plans, a lot of dreams and a lot of ideas and I hope to be able to share some of them with you. But first, I would like to start with the more regular podcast format and just talk about what I've been working on and doing. And then later on, I will talk a bit more about what I'm planning for the new year. I can't remember completely, but I think I only have one finished object since the last time we spoke. Um, And that is uh, this shawl. I have... Maybe you recognize it because I, if you subscribe to this channel, I have uh, released a video, a pattern video, <laughs> um, a, I don't know, a week ago or something, uh, with the shawl, which is a crescent shape. It's hard to show on the camera. It's a crescent shaped shawl with the uh, little pom poms attached. I released it as a free pattern, but as a video pattern. So there's no written instructions. I just did the video to show you how to make the shawl. Um, and yeah, it was a lot of fun. Uh, it was the first time I I recorded using this camera. I'm now recording using a new camera. Um, and I'm also using a new microphone. So in case the sound is a bit different from what it used to be or yeah. If there are changes, it's because I'm getting used to new equipment. And I'm also editing using Premiere Pro, which I didn't before. And it is all a learning curve, I have to say. And I have noticed one thing, I have to get a new computer because my old computer, which is very old, uh, I got it when I was still in high school. It is just not happy when I'm trying to edit larger files and using programs that demand a little bit more of the capacity it also yeah it had some problems 
uh, long story short, but it is, um, yeah, I made this little video. It was a lot of fun to record the video and I really hope the pattern will make someone happy out there. I like doing free patterns when it's something this simple. I didn't feel like it was worth making a real pattern for it. Um, so it was something I had thought about for a while to make this little pattern and it was just a lot of fun. So that was one finished object and I also, other than that, I have some hat, hats that I cannot show you because I gave them all away. I made three hats for Christmas, for Christmas presents, um, I can show you a picture. Two of them, uh, um, I made the, actually I think I showed it in the last podcast episode, I made the, um, the Petit Knit uh, Oslo hat and I was confused because I had gotten the regular pattern and there's also the mohair edition, so the regular pattern has two strands of normal fingering weight yarn held together for DK weight and the other one has a strand of fingering and a strand of mohair and is knit at a different gauge so there are two patterns I didn't know that so I well I just used the first pattern and I looked up looked at the, um, uh, the needle I saw the needle size was different so I just made the pattern with the other needle size and it worked out perfectly so I yeah I had to rip that one back once and uh, make it again but it worked out and I made I gave that one to my mother-in-law and she was very happy to receive this uh, soft mohair hat and I also made in a more rustic yarn I used Isaiah Jensen yarn which is a DK weight yarn from Isaiah I made a I think it's called the violet waffle hat and yeah it's a free pattern on Ravelry I will put all links below whatever I mention I try to link of course sometimes I forget something but if I if you're wondering what I'm talking about and you don't understand my English or something else there should be a link below um, yeah I made that one for my father-in-law so they both got hats which was very nice and I also made my partner a hat um, I had promised him one a long time ago so I made him a Oslo hat in the normal edition so without the mohair i used the sunday yarn which is a new yarn by petite knit uh, she made in collaboration with uh, sandness um, and it's an unsuperwash yarn which i always appreciate so that was nice uh, he's wearing it all the time so i cannot show you um, i have another project i will show you in a bit that i made with this same yarn so you can have a, an idea what it looks like and uh, yeah, so I have a lot of invisible hats I cannot show you for this podcast, unfortunately. Uh, I finished a little something, which I can show you. So actually, this is the one. Let me just button it. This is a little... Um, looks very dark on the camera. This is a little... How do you say? Bib. It's a little bib for, for drooling. Um, and it is uh, knit in garter stitch using some short rows and some increases and it's a pattern that I found in this new book by uh, Susie Hauman, um which I just borrowed at the library I think the pattern is here so you can see it's just a small bib and I used the leftovers of the Sunday yarn to make it uh, so that has already come in handy because uh, my little guy is teething like crazy. He's growing his front teeth, which also means he didn't sleep very well for the whole weekend. Um, poor guy, he got yeah like a cold and teething and drooling and everything was just very miserable for him. But he has one new front tooth sticking out, so I guess the other one is going to come soon. So it's just a little quick, um, yeah, I knitted him in a day on off while he was playing and doing other stuff. So very easy to make and the yarn is nice it's just very it has a very tight it's very tightly spun so it's very bouncy but I also sometimes find that it catches the threads uh, I'm not the it's not my favorite type of uh, how do you say the, the spinning it's not my f favorite look to it it looks nice once it's knit up, it's not that, but it's, I prefer a woolen spun. I don't know what you call this type of spinning, I've seen it many times before, 
it's like very tightly spun like uh, yeah so I but it's a nice it's nice and it seems to work well for all the drooling happening I have uh, well other than all the hats invisible hats I have been knitting on socks I don't know what happened but uh, it seems like there's some sock fever happening on Instagram as well and in the knitting world in general because um, yeah there's just I see a lot of people who say I don't normally knit socks but I have just been feeling the need to cast on socks and uh, maybe it's because of this new sock book by Leine which looks really exciting I haven't seen it in person but of course I've seen all the uh, yeah the pictures on Instagram and stuff I don't know what happened or maybe it's just the time of year but everyone seems to be wanting to knit socks and I also have been knitting a lot of socks I um, actually ordered some nice Christmas sock yarn before Christmas and I didn't manage to uh, didn't manage to arrive unfortunately before Christmas um, and I wanted to cast that on for the trip uh, when we were going to Poland we, were, we had a lot of hours in the car so instead I cast on this pair of socks um, I knit this pair in the car going to Poland uh, and back um, and it is knit in Lana Grossa tweed yarn that I used before uh, when I made my Waiting for Henry socks. It is um, a very nice tweedy yarn and I made a little something funny on the heel. I will talk about that in a moment and uh, the toes. So I used the contrasting rust color uh, for the heel and toe and I did a one what do you say three by one rip all all over the foot and up here it's a two by two i just did uh, yeah i just invented the sock as i was going along i didn't want to do a heel flap and gusset because i didn't have the <laughs> i normally use um uh, i'm knitting it on a nine inch circular which i really enjoy using and i didn't have the a longer needle for magic loop let me just open actually well here's the yarn this is the uh, contrasting yarn and this is the cream color and I'm knitting them on this nine inch circulars which I really really love using for socks but I find it I guess you can do it do it but I find it really hard to do uh, heel flap and gusset with this so I wanted to try a different sock so I bought the fish slip a different heel I bought the fish lips kiss heel pattern and I I tried that but then I got really curious I don't know I first time I did it I just thought I had seen this construction before which is when you have like a Y shaped short row kind of heel so I just wanted to try it out which yeah uh, it turned out okay it's because I, I feel like the short row um, heels don't sit well on my foot and I just want a bigger short row heel so I tried this out um, I will have to try different things because I think it could work out but I'm not completely happy with it but also it's not bad so let's see if I can figure something out but um, yeah so I did one sock and a half and the other half is Oops, let's see if I can pull it out. The other half of the sock is here, but as I didn't know uh, how far I had to knit, I stopped because I didn't have the other sock with me. So anyways, uh, I had to stop knitting on the sock and I actually pulled out the needle. That's why it's looking like this, because I just felt like knitting on another sock and I only have this. Um, this is 2.25 millimeters I only have it have one of those so I as I couldn't remember how long I had to knit I don't know I, I think I was somewhere and I didn't have the sock with me wow, long story. I, sometimes I make things more complicated than they have to be but uh, then I picked up this old whip which is a Mondim sock um, that I had I've knit until here I think and I just yeah I just picked this one back up and 
one day Jan is a Jan by Retrosaria in Portugal and it is a wonderful non Sakyan. sock yarn. I uh, yeah, I just finished this yesterday. I put in a, a gutter stitch heel. So this has a normal heel flap and gusset and just a normal rounded toe. And it fits really well and it's such a lovely yarn. I really like the yarn. Um, so you might notice on this, uh, the sock is sitting on this pair of sock blockers that finally I decided to get um, this pair, which I asked, I don't know if I asked about it on, on, inst on here or on Instagram, but I, I was thinking about getting some sock blockers and I finally got this pair, which is a pair um, I ordered from U uh, Ukraine. And it is, uh, I think it's called Loom Master on Instagram. He has an Etsy shop. Uh, it can be a little bit hard to catch an update, I think. I know some people said it was not so easy. But this one is just, isn't it the sweetest? It has um, this little squirrel on the top. It has an acorn, um, an oak leaf, and a little mushroom at the end. They're just so cozy and you can pick between different finishes. So I finally got myself these as a little early Christmas present and they've just been really great to put my socks on when I want to show the sock a little bit better than like this, but also for blocking. Uh, the sock yarn I ordered before Christmas, unfortunately didn't get here because of the terrible Danish postal system. Um, and I, yeah, they got here after Christmas. So when I came home, I was not sure if I should cast them on or not. Um, it was a sock yarn by Woolen Twine. Here is the label. Uh, she's, uh, she does natural dyeing uh, in Germany. And uh, yeah, I got the sock set, which is a little skein of contrasting color and then this beautiful um, speckled red and green on a cream base and it is so rare to come across a nicely speckled uh, naturally dyed yarn um, and, and especially if it's not on a superwash sock base and this is non superwash non nylon just a very rustic beautiful sock base it's hard to come across this type of yarn because when you're using natural dyes and on a non superwash base it just from what I know, it's hard to get the little specks. Um, yeah, so I want, I have already wound it up. So you probably have guessed that I started the socks anyway, even if it was after Christmas. Um, and this is how far I've gotten. Oh, hold on a minute. There you go. And you can see the little green and red specks all over. This sock yarn, I actually started over a couple of times because it's a thicker sock yarn, so it's more like a sport weight, I would say. Um, I'm knitting it on three millimeter, um, uh, nine inch circulars. These, by the way, are from Chiaogu, the nine inch circulars. And um, I just had to figure out the number of stitches and I finally ended up casting on, I think, 50. 52 something like that I can't remember now uh, but I yeah I had had to rip back a couple of times and I will do a pretty long cuff and then I think one of the simple socks uh, with this probably won't be done until next Christmas but that's okay because I'm really slow at knitting socks so it will just be a very slow whip I take it when I go in the car just knit a few rounds and then put it back in the sock bag so but I'm really excited about this yarn and excited to see if it will be finished for next Christmas <laughs> yeah I've just been playing around with my sock recipe and figuring out what I like how I like to make them and I've been playing around with different heels uh, and that's something I, I wanted to talk about a bit in this episode because I find heels to be one of the trickier parts in socks um, as I said, I don't feel I haven't tried on a pair of uh, short row heel socks that I find sits well on my foot. I always find they end up sliding down from the heel. I think a heel flap and gusset is the best fit for me, for my type of foot. Of course, feet are different. That's why we have different type of heels and sock uh, 
patterns and recipes and uh, yeah so i i just really like the heel flap and i like to make the heel flap quite deep um so on this one i did the the it in gutter stitch but normally i would do some kind of uh, uh, yeah to make it a little bit thicker i can show you i think the prettiest uh, heel flap for me is the um, eye of partridge heel which you can see here and i think it is absolutely beautiful i used it on my lovely socks which yeah these are my lovely socks it's a pattern that will come out in february and uh, i think eye of partridge is just very beautiful it's a slip you slip uh, it's a slip stitch heel so you can do the normal or the most popular i think a slip stitch heel which you slip you <laughs> i cannot say this uh, where you slip uh, every second stitch on every second row i think to explain it and with the eye of partridge part which you kind of shift that pattern so you get a moss kind of a moss stitch seat stitch effect um and it just makes this nice little diamond diamond pattern which i think is very nice and um yeah so i just been finding that i prefer a deeper heel flap and so the gusset also is a bit longer um and as on this one it uh yeah it's i just think it's very nice i and that is what i was trying to achieve with I think I like the look of the short row heel, but I just find that it doesn't sit well on my foot. It's too sh too small, um, and so that's what I was trying to do here. I think I will try to work it a bit different, not using the fish lips kiss heel construction as that's a paid for pattern, but maybe try some other short rows and see if I can come up with something that. Uh, it's a bit deeper. Uh, I found the, I think it's called sweet tomato heel, something like that. Uh, but that one will have you do a stripe around the front of the foot. And I don't necessarily want that when I want like a contrasting heel and toe. I like that it's just the heel and there's no stripe. I know some patterns has the stripe and you can do that, but I don't, I don't know if I like that or I, that's not what I want for this kind of sock um so as you can see the only problem is now i have a lot of half finished or single kind of socks so that's a bit annoying uh, i have one more whip that i started working on before christmas i actually wanted to have this as a christmas present for my daughter but yeah this didn't happen it's um it's the clara dress which is a uh, pattern it comes i think in two sizes there was some story about it now i can't remember uh this one i have uh from a magazine a danish knitwear magazine that i used to buy a long time ago and it is uh just this is the bottom of the dress and it's knit up and has the same motif so this motif that you can see here it has that uh, up also on the um, on the bust and yeah, I'm knitting it out of a new to me yarn or new uh, kind of yarn, which is a tensile yarn. Um, let's see if it will focus. There you go. Uh, and it is very sleek and very shiny. Tensile is a. Let me show you here. That's uh, the label on this one. Tensile is a. Um, I don't know if it says something about it, but tensile is a. a, a Lyocell. It's it's made from plant fibers. I don't remember exactly what it's made from, but it's uh, yeah, it's made from plant fibers, and it is. Uh, if I if I'm been correctly informed, it's a uh, quite sustainable yarn. And the process is still it's still a process to make it, but it's not so. It's uh, quite environmentally friendly. Um, so I just wanted to give it a try. I found this actually at the supermarket. It's um, the I found. Yeah, I found this at the supermarket, and I just got it's this very uh, tealy blue. Sometimes it looks more green color, uh, but it's just so slippery, and I don't enjoy working on it that much. Uh, it feels like it's constantly slipping. I have to tension it uh, quite hard. 
I guess I'm too used to working with rustic yarns where I don't have to tension so hard because it grips my finger a little bit more. This one is just sliding off my finger when I'm holding it. So I kind of have to wrap it around some more and something. And then th I'm not used to that. I don't normally do that. Normally I hold my working yarn just yeah in my hand like this. Uh, sometimes I will wrap around if it's a very thin yarn. So just to tension a bit more. and. But I find it hard to find the right tension. Not that I can see it in the stitches, but it's just, I feel like I'm tensioning my hand more when I work on it. And I had that problem with other kinds of like um, linen yarns. Oh, it's getting really dark. Let me try and... So uh, I have the same problem with linen yarns and cotton yarns. And yeah, it's just, I guess I'm not the best of friends with the... Uh, plant fibers. Uh, I think they are nice once they're knit up, but I don't enjoy the process as much as I enjoy the process of working with uh, woolly, rustic yarns. I, I, I like m uh, mixed yarns also, um, but I just, yeah. I think it's gonna be okay, but I have to pick this one back up. I will put it somewhere that where I can see it so I don't... Um, it was in a bag after Christmas and I just forgot about it and I think sometimes project bags can be a little bit, um, yeah, they make me forget about projects. So that's not a good thing. Um, so that's a work in progress. Uh, and for uh, things coming up in 2020. Wow, that sounds so strange to say. <laughs> I had to think for a moment. I have... Uh, some new patterns that will be released in 2020. I talked about them before. I have a shawl pattern. I mean, I have more patterns, but the first ones will be uh, my sweater pattern that I have shown you with the honeycomb brioche. It's, uh, it has a name now. It's called the Favo sweater. Favo means uh, honeycomb in Italian. And I just thought it was very fitting. I asked on Instagram for a bit of help with the name. and. Uh, although no one came up with that name, I got some suggestions on Ita using like Italian words um, and then it just came to me that oh, maybe I should use the word for honeycomb in Italian. So it's called the Favo sweater and it is uh, still in testing but it's almost done and I hope to have it out in the beginning of February. I still don't have a date. I don't want to put dates because yeah, just have to take it easy with that. I also have um, the lovely socks, which I just showed you. These will come out also in February. They're also in testing and I would say they're pretty much done as well. There's still a lot of work. I have to take pictures, which is hard because it's just me. And yeah, weather is crazy. Not crazy. It's just really gloomy all the time and rainy and yeah, makes it harder to take pictures. And then I have a shawl that is also in testing, which will come out. So I think that will be in February, all these patterns. And then I have other ones coming out later, which I will talk more about once we get there. I have um, something else exciting, which is uh, I will release my yarn in February. I did it last year. It was in December, I think, last year or November, December. Uh, and now I have doubled the amount. I think I also already mentioned it and I have three new colorways and uh, they're just absolutely gorgeous. I can't wait to show you more. I will talk more about it when I'm closer to the release date. Um, but that will also be in February and I will have several, uh, I will update the shop several times. So, but don't worry, I will make sure that it's, uh, I will shout it everywhere when, once I have decided the date. Uh, the last thing I wanted to talk about is what I'm planning for this channel, for this YouTube channel and uh, the content I want to create for the channel because I've been happy doing podcasts and I still love doing podcasts and chatting and stuff. But it also gets harder, as I mentioned before. Uh, I don't always want to show my patterns beforehand because changes can happen sometimes they are secret for one reason or another and it just makes it really hard to since i'm working mainly on designs i have some things i haven't shown you today so it just makes it a little boring to talk for me in a podcast is about what you're, we're working on and showing things and, and that's why i've been thinking about what i would like to do with this channel because 
I have thought about opening a Patreon and I might still do that. That would be for um, uh, early, early access to patterns and more uh, designing videos and stuff like that, I think, if I would open one. But I also have thought about uh, that I would like to do some different videos on this channel. You have already seen the, the pattern I released in a video. Uh, I thought that was a fun way to make a video, but I, I, I am not the person who likes so much to do uh, tutorials. I don't think I'm precise enough. Um, it's not my style. Uh, I do tutorials for my patterns when there's something specific that needs to be shown, but it's that's not what I want to do. I have more. Um, I'm more thinking about doing some inspirational videos, showing what my work is like, but also uh, the nature and you know just my everyday life here. And I like watching videos like that myself as well as watching podcasts. So I thought that would be a nice way to do. I have uh, collected um, footage from uh, the month of January, and I thought to do like a monthly. If I can get to it, uh, a little vlog type thing, um, and yeah, about my work and my everyday, and I thought that would be a nice way to do something creative with the content, but that is not necessarily me sitting down and talking. And um, I also would like to do some more videos with a specific topic, like I did my make nine. Uh, I like to talk about something specific that is not just my works in progress and what I've been up to and so on. So that would also be an idea for um, for the new year. I have some ideas uh, and of course time is always the issue but I really hope I can manage to get them out there. So don't worry if you really like the podcast, uh, it will still continue. I, at least I like to sit and chat with all of you about knitting because I don't really talk so much with anyone else about knitting um, here so it's a really nice moment for me to just relax and feel like I'm with a friend talking about knitting. Uh, That's it for today's episode. I am expecting to see you soon um, both for the little vlog that I talked about and also for um, when I will release the yarn and my patterns. I hope to make an episode just so I can explain a bit more what it's all about and um, yeah so expect to see me here again in a few weeks I think that's safe to say this time take care I talk to you very soon bye